Well then, Bunny Galore, let's talk about books. Let's you see, books. people always say a hey. people always say, Hey, Steve, how do you and your wife keep the spark in your marriage? To which I say, Spark. I remember the spark. <laughs> that was so long ago. <laughs> One is the loneliest number that you'll ever something. And two is also a number, and I probably should have looked up the lyrics before. <laughs> People also but you're say, not far off. Okay, good. I figured I was in the ballpark. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that having long hair sucks <laughs> when you live in Oklahoma where the wind keeps messing with your hair. Yeah. Wow, that's two songs so far in the opening. Ten notes from the bookstore, and that's impressive. Yes, it is. So far, we've had two numbers. Like, like, wow, that's not usually the sort of Oscar it. Let's go for three. Rock steady, <laughs> steady, rocking all night, all night long. Rock steady, <laughs> rock until the break of. Rock until the break of dawn. And what I also know is that I have been a loyal and hardworking and over-exaggerating employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years now. My God. And that is a long time, 17 years. But 17 is pretty, still pretty darn young, you know? Yeah. In fact, in fact if I was 17 years old, then there is no way... That I would know this. Black velvet in a little boy's smile. <laughs> Black velvet in a slow southern style. Four songs. Boom. There we go. And as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to rub my fingers consensually upon your dainty ears with this week's astoundingly bland installment of Notes from the Bookstore! <laughs> and this week's episode of Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by Nick Nolte's new autobiography. Nick Nolte has a new uh, autobiography out. He does? In yeah, yeah, he totally does. It's entitled I I was thinking it may be entitled I wasn't that drunk. No, it, no, it's entitled <laughs> It's the story of how an attractive young man can become America's leading fuggo. <laughs> the title actually comes from The Noise You Make When You See Nick Nolte Now. Oh, okay. You know, let me just Google Google image search Nick Nolte now. This shouldn't be that bad. I mean, he was really handsome when he was younger. This can't be. <laughs> the title comes from So Nick. Really excited to have you here on the set. So in this film, they're going to be playing a washed up alcoholic. And let me just say, wow. The makeup department did a really amazing job. Actually, I haven't been to makeup yet. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what happened, man? Did you run over an old gypsy woman? Is that what happened? Because I hear that's what happens. <laughs> now, there's, <clears throat> now there's a lot happening at your local bookstore. This week, I, I have a lot of things to cover. I want to talk about Last week's wildly uncomfortable story time. Okay. I want to talk about an upcoming book signing that we're going to be having. And I want to talk about the concept of vacations. But first, 
I would like to take up a sizable portion of, of our podcasting time to crap on Mr. Jim Ross. Okay. Jim Ross. WWE's Jim Ross? Yes. Jim Ross, <laughs> a.k.a. good old JR, as he is known in the wrestling world. Yes. He is a legend in uh, the world of wrestling. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame, along with Donald Trump. He is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yes. My favorite picture from the last women's march is a guy that just says remove with a sign and it says remove Donald Trump from the WWE Hall of Fame now. <laughs> I'm like, yes, there you go. I am a big supporter of that cause. He's a legendary announcer, Jim Ross. His voice is basically embedded in the mind of wrestling fans, so much so that if you find someone and they watched wrestling, then there's a good chance that Jim Ross's voice is a part of that person's memories. <laughs> I I would believe so, yes. Yeah, so like 1994 to like 2005, he was the voice of professional wrestling. He And so, so many memories of wrestling just have his voice over, wildly over exaggerating in the background of them. <laughs> Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold Steve Austin! And then there's also a Good God Almighty! He's broken in half! Like that's another one. It's a slobber yeah. knocker. Yeah. He 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 yeah, he had his own little catchphrases and stuff like that. I also remember when uh, WCW was fighting with the WWF. And so they had a match and it was two, two Mexican wrestlers and it was a pink slip on a pole match. Okay. Whoever loses the match gets fired from WCW. And uh, they, they got one of the backstage guys to do a Jim Ross impression. <laughs> and he really moved like one half of his mouth and it was really like he, like they went way too far yeah and i'm like hey you know what we should do what what i think will really get people to watch our show let's make fun of a stroke victim <laughs> this is ecw in the year 1998 yes so he actually wrestled once or twice, Jim yeah. Ross. Even though he was like a, a big fat guy who at one point in time had a stroke, he, he would occasionally have these like wrestling matches or be forced to wrestle, you know, like a, like a Vince McMahon is pissed at Jim Ross, so he forces him to be in some wrestling match. Anyway, one positive uh, aspect of watching professional wrestling uh, throughout most of my life is that one thing I had in my pocket moving here, I already knew the OU fight song. Yes. Because when Jim Ross would come out to wrestle, his theme music would be the University of Oklahoma fight song. <laughs> so I already knew it. That, that was kind of cool for me. But he's more than a voice. People in 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 Oklahoma know him. First off, he is also a New York Times bestselling author. His cookbook did very well back in the heyday of wrestling in like the late 90s. <laughs> but, but people in Oklahoma, they know this person, even people who don't know wrestling. First off, he has a very successful barbecue sauce. Yes, he does. He sells it on his website, but it also is carried at every Norman, Oklahoma homeland supermarket. Is it? Yeah. <clears throat> and it's weird because like I was talking to someone about Jim Ross's new book that had come out called Slobberknocker. And then I'm talking to I'm talking to this person. This person doesn't know wrestling. And then finally the person goes. Oh, doesn't he have a barbecue sauce? And I'm like, yes, it's the barbecue sauce guy. Oh, OK. <laughs> I used his barbecue sauce all the time. That's good barbecue sauce. So besides that, besides being a, a wrestling legend, 
besides uh, having uh, being a New York Times bestselling author, besides having a successful barbecue sauce, uh, another big way that people in Oklahoma know him, he is one of the main financial backers for the University of Oklahoma football team. Okay. He went to the University of Oklahoma. He lives in Oklahoma. He lives near the University of Oklahoma. And everyone in Oklahoma takes their college football way too fucking seriously. Yeah. So uh, everyone loves football. And so he he financially backs the, the OU football team. He is usually right there in the field, on the sidelines, with the coaches and the players. He's only ever missed three or four games, and those have been because of major health reasons and surgeries and shit. Even when, like, he had WrestleMania on a Sunday, he'd be flying to Oklahoma on Friday nights, going to the OU football game that Saturday, and then flying to wherever to do WrestleMania. That's sounding like an unhealthy obsession now. Yeah, the guy, the guy is like, even if you know absolutely nothing about uh, if, if, about the WWE and you live in Norman, Oklahoma, you still probably know Jim Ross. He's a big man in the world of college football. And I remember he was on the cover of like OU Football Magazine. And they're like, oh, hey, Jim Ross is on the cover of OU Magazine. Really weird. It, it was like a 10-page interview, too. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a big name in Oklahoma. Uh, Jim Ross. Yes. And he lives where? In Norman, Oklahoma. In fact, this guy lives about 15 to 20 minutes away from where? You. My bookstore. Your bookstore. Okay. So he had he had a new book that came out right before the holidays. And it's an autobiography about his, his life in professional wrestling. And it's called Slobber Knocker. And it was a and it came out and we had it on our octagon on sale 20 percent off and we had it in the front of the store and it was a big deal and uh so they announced that he's going to be doing a book tour and a book signing and so he came and did a signing really yes at a store in oklahoma city oh, okay yeah about 45 minutes away <laughs> And I was so pissed because he literally lives like 15 minutes away. He lives in the same goddamn city. Yeah. He's right here. So I kept bugging him on Twitter. Yeah. Because he's on Twitter a lot. Yeah. And he retweets people who, who, uh, who, but he's on Twitter all the time, like promoting his barbecue sauce, promoting his books, pr talking about OU football. So I'm like, hey, Jim Ross. Here's a picture of the 40 copies of your book that we have at your local bookstore. <laughs> yeah. And I bugged him over and over and over again. He never came in. He never showed up. And the thing is, too, is that I've actually seen him in my store before shopping. Really? Yeah. And I didn't bother him because I, you know, I've had a, a couple of various levels of celebrities come into the store and I always try and be nice to him and then leave him alone. So it's like, that's Jim Ross. That's cool. I'm going to leave him alone. But that was before he had a best-selling book in our store. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you can come in and, and, and sign a couple of copies. Or at least, if you're having a signing, we're right here. Yeah. We're literally a stone's throw away from the college. Uh, uh, and and you, you spend all of your time there with the freaking football team. You can't come over. And sign a couple copies of the book. So I'm sorry to have to say this, but to hell with this guy. Oh, okay. He never signed any copies of the book. He had a signing super far away. And so he, he, the books weren't selling and we had to return a, 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 a bunch of copies of the books. I don't even think we have any copies anymore because that book came out in like what, October, November? Book is gone now. You had your chance, Jim Ross. <laughs> SOB. I am done with this man. And we'll never interview him on the show. Yeah. 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 That's that's probably the worst sting. No right matter there. how much he begs. Yeah. 
No, no matter how much he begs and pleads, no, we're not interviewing him. You don't get the Bunny and Steve experience. No. Can't believe this man. So, Bunny. Yes. Uh, last week, I had a story time. Yes. Uh, that, that you were quite anxious about. Yeah. Because I was reading the book, I Am Harriet Tubman. Uh, the day before I went on, because I, I, I have a number of Facebook groups. Now, this group, they're all closed groups, but this book was just for people who work for the company. And then I'm part of this other group of people who work for the company and they're in charge of the children's department. I'm not in charge of the children's department anymore, but I stay in that group because sometimes we talk about story times. And yeah. then I'm part of a group of people who work for the company and they're in charge of the receiving area and they really help me out a lot. But uh, I went to the children's department group and we were talking about like it's it, it, so what are your plans for story time this saturday cuz uh i i hate to say this but i'm a bit nervous because the book is a really messed up book uh i did not i glossed over the part where uh harriet tubman was so poor that she started selling her clothes and panties <laughs> okay I'm like, call me crazy. I don't want to be talking about a woman being so poor she has to sell her own panties at a story time in front of four-year-olds. Yeah. Because I'm a very interactive person. What am I going to be like? Hey, kids, have you ever been so poor you wanted to sell your panties? <laughs> Show of hands. Show of hands. <laughs> so I glossed over a few things. One person on, on in the group mentioned a nice tip where it's like, I'm going to just be reading the words and not the word bubbles because the characters are talking to each other. And then there's the words on the bottom of the page. So I said, okay, that's, that's a good, that's a good plan. That'll make it a little bit less bad if I don't read the word bubbles. So I'm reading the book and halfway through it, you know, the kids are just sitting there and they're all depressed and sad and they're all like yeah. kind of really depressed listening to me talk and, and, one of the kids is just looking all sad and kind of scared and oh oh hey mr steve you're not reading the word bubbles <gasps> and i'm like oh, oh. Oh. And, and then which one was it it was it was an older boy and uh and i'm like oh uh, yeah, you know what? This is a long book. I'm not reading the word bubbles because I'm trying to. Uh, I, I know, know a, I know a guy. That kid totally okay. could be kneecapped. Mm -hmm. I kept trying to inter. I was interrupting the story constantly to try and cheer the kids up because it's a really messed up book that has to deal with uh, <laughs> slavery and racism and violence. People are getting whipped and and beaten up and stuff, you know? So I was constantly trying to interrupt the story and cheer the kids up, but I, I, I powered through it. There was one black mom in the audience and yeah. I did not spend all of the story time nervously staring at her. <laughs> yeah. Am I getting it right? Am I telling it right? Is it, yeah. Is there something I'm missing? I, yeah, I may have spent some time nervously staring at her, but not all of the time. Yeah. That's the important part. Not all of the time. So, Bunny. Yes. We're having a book signing coming up. I don't think it's this weekend. I think it's the weekend after that. But anyway, we have a book signing coming up. It's for an author of a new series of chapter books. Now, I'm going to try and not mention the author's name. Okay. Or the name of the series. Because it's a real small printing. It's a small publishing company that I never heard of. And, and it's a small time author. This is definitely not a big author. You'd probably have better luck winning the lottery than f finding these books on a shelf somewhere. So I don't want to publicly shame this guy. If this were a big time release. Yeah. But penguin and putnam or scholastic some big company like that then i would be more inclined to publicly crap all over this guy <laughs> okay but that it stands i don't know this guy from a hole in the ground so i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna try 
I'm going to try not to mention him. That being said, if you really, really wanted to find out who I'm talking about, you probably could. You just need to do some work. Anyway, we're doing this book signing. It's for a series of four chapter books for younger kids. It, it, it's a series. As far as I can tell, it's it's kind of like the Magic Treehouse series, which is a popular series of chapter books. But it, it's like someone saw the Magic Treehouse books and said, hey, you know these really popular chapter books here, the Magic Treehouse? Well, what if we get those and just redo them for redneck children? Oh, no. So it, it, it's about, uh, you know, four young kids in the Wild West getting into adventures. And I and they looked kind of cheap, kind of low rent, these books. So I decided to pick up one of the four books and read it. And... Uh, I'm really excited about this signing now. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a real big success in Oklahoma because book four, these uh, beautiful young white kids yes. have to deal with an evil Mexican bandit. Oh yeah, let me, tell you, let me tell you what his name is. Let me tell you what the bad guy's name is. You know what his name is? What Esteban Macho Nacho. Oh, get it? Because he's Mexican. Yeah. Nacho. He's got a long, curly mustache. Yeah. And uh, he he's wearing a very dirty poncho. All of the pictures in the book feature his really dirty poncho. So many stains, this dirty poncho. And, and, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm just like reading into things. Maybe, maybe you know, this is a really sensitive, nuanced characterization. I don't know. I haven't read the book, so yeah. I decided to read a few chapters of the book, specifically when Macho Nacho shows up. And uh, first off, everyone calls him Senor. Okay. Boss of the gang. His real name is Guillermo. Okay. He speaks in broken Spanglish like, Vamos, chicos, let's go. <laughs> and uh, and uh, here's the best part. Here's the part that really got me. Like, I was like, should I, like, tell my my store manager about this? No, I don't want to, like, play a race card or, like, it, there's, there's nothing here to really be offended by. Yeah. with macho nacho like <laughs> i'm just gonna let it drop and then finally i get to one passage where one of the kids says gee that's the shortest outlaw i've ever seen okay that's when i'm like okay so so this book is making a point of mentioning how the mexican guy is short yes now you've lost me. Also, it, also they they keep mentioning that he has a, a he's a real hothead. He's got a big temper. Of course, all of those Mexicans have a fiery Latin temper, so it's understandable. Yeah. But yeah, th that's the shortest outlaw I've ever seen. <laughs> Thankfully, the gang of white kids defeats the evil, angry Mexican. And at one point in the book, the white kids stop a stampede with a fiddle version of Cotton Eye Joe. With what? With a fiddle version of the song Cotton Eyed Joe. Okay. Yeah, I'm really excited about this signing now. Yeah. A big fan of Macho Nacho. <laughs> can't, can't wait for this guy to come into the store. Maybe I should find a dirty poncho. You should. You know? And like a sombrero. Come, come, you know, because I, I don't want him to look at me and be like, is he Mexican? No, let me, let me really point it out. I'll wear my taco costume. Yeah. Oh, oh that's great. I'm just going to wear my taco costume. The day of the signing. That's perfect. Boom. Taco costume. I, I agree and I support this. Good. I'm ab absolutely going to do that. Yes, Maxwell. What? Yes, I know Supernatural started. I know Supernatural started. Sorry. 
Can you do that? No, no, I, I try to, but it's, you know, I have a long podcast. Anyway, um, finally this week, Bunny. Yes. Vacation time. Yes. I get about two weeks. Uh, right now, it, it, I in about a, I think next year I get three weeks. Next year I get three weeks of vacation time, and then the year after that I get four weeks of vacation time. Anyway, last year I didn't use any of my vacation time. Really? Okay, good. I, I did not take a vacation at all. Well, actually, it would be good if it wasn't for the fact that recently um, the company has decided that uh, we. For a while, it was like a save as you go sort of thing, where any vacation yes. time you don't use, uh, will will go into the next year. You no, know, we're not a company like that anymore. If you don't use your vacation time, you lose it. It's use it or lose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the company that we are now. So last year, I didn't use any of my vacation time, and I lost it. And the reason for that was, uh, I was waiting for my other receiver. Yes, to come back from the war mm -hmm. and i'm like oh yeah i haven't taken vacation time but don't worry because my other my other receiver is coming in because i shared the job with someone and i'm like it's okay he's coming back when he's coming back uh in like may it, when he's coming back in like march then 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 boom i can take some vacation time oh wait he's being pushed back until may okay in may when he comes back in may then I'll be able to take some vacation time. Oh, wait, now it's being pushed back until August? Okay, well, once he comes back in August, boom, I got vacation time. Yeah. So he comes back at the end of August, and then, oh, look at that. He's got two weeks of vacation time. Okay, well, <laughs> then he's coming back in September. Sometime after September, I can take vacation time. What? He just quit? Well, screw that guy. <laughs> So I just ended up not taking vacation time last year. So this year, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I'm absolutely going to take a vacation. This year, my wife is dedicated to me taking vacation time. Okay. And the reason is because of Supernatural. I, I, I my, kind of figured, but how? It, um, my wife gets... Get, it, it, this might come as a surprise to everyone who is a longtime listener of the podcast, but sometimes my wife can get stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a shocker. So my, my wife went on vacation to the supernatural convention. And, uh, when she came back, she was like a different person. She is, she just said, Oh, it, it was, it was like a reset button. I just got away from the kids, got away from the house, got away from the bills, the family, just everything. And I got to just spend some time in a situation that I love, and it was great. And uh, uh, Steve, I want the same thing for you. You're very stressed out. You didn't take a vacation last year. You're 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 very stressed out with work and with everything. You need a reset too. So she's 100% dedicated with making sure that I take uh, a vacation. So we even scheduled it. So I and I finally got got it through the store manager and she's like, well, you know, the I guess we can we can give you this vacation time. And I said, yeah, uh, I, were you here last year when I didn't take vacation time? And she's like, really? OK, no, I'll give you this whole week. I'll even give you a few more days. No, you're good. So I have this big swatch of time that I'm going to have off. Good. It's during everyone's spring break time, too. It's during the kids' spring break time and Natasha's spring break time. So Natasha can stay with the kids, and I can just go off. Plus, we'll be getting a real big tax refund, so we can afford to send me somewhere. The only problem now is, where the hell do I go? Hmm. I have no idea where I'm going on vacation. First off, it's going to be alone by myself. That I don't mind. That's fine. Uh, the one place I really want to go to is Walt Disney World, but uh, that's a bit too huge and maybe even expensive. I mean, we're getting a tax return, but not that much of a tax return. Yeah. Uh, uh, so don't think I can go to Disney World. I would like to go to Disneyland. Have you, have you considered Dollywood? <clears throat> no, 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 no. But I would like to go to uh, 
Branson, Missouri, because uh, I would like to go look for the uh, to to look for the Fountain of Youth, which I believe it is there somewhere, or at least that's what the Mormons think. Uh huh. No, the Garden of Eden. That's what they said. Oh, the, the Garden, Garden of Eden. Okay, Branson. What Maxwell? Let's go to Legoland. Or Legoland. Legoland and Lego World are very much for younger children. It's something I would take you to, something I would take Eleanor to, but not something I'd be excited about going to on my own. The only reason I would want to go to Legoland is because of the foam Lego pieces that you can play with in the pool. They have Lego yeah. pieces play within their pool and and they float so you can use these lego pieces and create things while you're swimming cool. like oh look i created this raft out of legos or whatever anyway um but no a lego land and lego world are not on the table if it's just me well disney world maybe but that's a bit too huge i've never been to disney world and 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 I would feel more comfortable growing with a group of people. There's always Disneyland, and I. it's been a long time since I've been to Disneyland. When I lived in Arizona, I would go like two two or three times a year. Yeah. And I knew Disneyland, and I loved Disneyland, and I knew all the trivia, and I knew where everything was. It's been so long now, I don't even freaking know anything about Disneyland. But I have gone alone to Disneyland before, and it's a bit lonely as hell. But then again, the last time I went... Uh, alone to Disneyland, the internet didn't exist. True. So, so, so there's that. Um, I could go to Vegas, but Maxwell, earmuffs. 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 There's a woman in Vegas, and she's had the hots for me for a number of years, and yeah. a, a couple of times a year, she always messages me like, hey, when are you going to Come to Vegas so I can jump your bones. Okay. She's like super serious about this. And it's like, I don't know if, like, I want to go to Vegas. That would be so much fun. See the stupid tourist sites, hang out around the strip, get drunk, get it, get into weird Hunter S. Thompson adventures. And also, uh, Las Vegas is the home of the uh, Pinball Hall of Fame and Museum, which is just a short couple of uh, blocks away from the strip. And I really want to spend all of my time at the Pinball Hall of Fame and Museum. But I don't think I can get to Vegas without getting jumped by this woman. Yes. Okay, you can un you can un earmuff yourself. Then there's Arizona, but then I think I would kind of sort of have to see my parents. Oh yeah. I don't think I can go to parent to, to Arizona without seeing my parents. You know, there are people I want to see in Arizona, but I think I'd have to see my parents and that's a whole can of worms. So, so the whole idea of the vacation is a big question mark right now. Yeah. Like I want to go somewhere and I can afford to go somewhere and I should go somewhere and I can go somewhere. I just have no freaking idea where I'm going. Hmm. They've got to be a lot of really cool places. Yeah. Yes, Maxwell, there's somewhere that I should go. What? Where should I go? And don't say Lego Land or Lego World. Where should I go? Uh, I know this place. Uh, but... You know a place. What's it called? It's called... Uh... Pirate, Pirate World? Because that theme park closed down a long time ago. It, it was the Ice Cream Bunny's fault. Yes. Come here, Maxwell. Come here. Stop walking around. Come over here and talk to me. <clears throat> what place do you think I should go on vacation? I know. It's okay, then tell me. Okay. Universal. Yes. You mean Universal Studios? Yeah. If I went to Disneyland or Disney World, then Universal Studios would probably be included in that. <clears throat> but I, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, so it would more be I'm going to a Disney theme park and I will visit Universal Studios. I don't think I want to just go to Universal Studios. Anyway, oh, yeah. Universal Studios is a, I don't like the beach. It's like the water's always freezing, even when it's the frickin' summer. And, it, it, and like, 
even if you put like beach towels down, you get sand everywhere. And 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 I'm I have too much OCD to be okay with that level of sand. And I was <laughs> once at the beach and I got stung by a jellyfish and it hurt like hell and I was crying. And then of course my parents being my parents didn't freaking believe me. And so I'm just there in pain and my legs all red and they don't believe me. And my brother's making fun of me. So it's a whole freaking it was a whole freaking thing. Anyway, I don't like the beach. Yeah. So I got into this, like, I was Not like, sure why? yeah, so I was your age, Maxwell, and I just hated the beach, and I didn't know what to do there, and my parents would literally get there at, like, 8 a.m. and not leave until, like, 8 p.m. We literally spent our entire day at this beach, and I wasn't sure what to do because I didn't like going into the water. So what I would do is I, I came up with this weird idea in my mind that birds, okay, hear me out, birds have the entire sky. So what the hell are these birds doing walking on the beach? <laughs> Humans just have the ground. You have the whole freaking sky. So go and use it, you stupid birds. So I would just chase birds all day at the beach. I was like this weird kid where it's like, hey, don't you want to go swimming? No, thanks. I, I need to scare these birds off of the beach. This is my job. Uh, that's how weird of a kid I was. And I would just spend like literally just a, a whole day just chasing birds off of the beach. And it was so weird to see this one Mexican kid fully dressed chasing birds off of a beach that by the end of the day, most times I would have like three or four other kids that were working for me. <laughs> they were like, oh, Steve, I'm going to go chase this one over here. Good, good. You go chase that one. I'll patrol this perimeter. <laughs> so if I went to the beach, I would be a forty-year-old guy chasing birds, chasing birds off of a beach. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they throw you in jail for that now. <laughs> I would go to a mental institution. But uh, those were all good ideas, Maxwell. Thank you for your ideas. Okay, yeah. those are all really good ideas. I forgot about Universal Studios. So I don't know where I'm going on vacation, but I've got a while to think about it. Anyway, yes, Maxwell? You have your own vacation place? Yeah. Well, I have my own laughing place. Everybody has a laughing place. I would like to take the time to say that that was a reference to a racist Disney animated movie. Oh. Uh, your room? I I love you, Maxwell, but I'm not going on vacation in your room. <laughs> I, I like the way you're thinking. It's kind of adorable, but I'm not going to take my vacation in your room. But thank you for the offer. I might take you up on that one of these days. Anyway, that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and gender rebels, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is get me two things. Okay? Okay. Two things. Two things. Number one. Number one. You need to get me some obtainium. Okay. Some unobtainium. Yes. I'm not sure how hard it will be to obtain. Ah, eh, piece of cake. So just FYI, I'm not sure how hard it is to get unobtainium. And, and number two, I need you to go out there and get me pictures of Spider-Man! <laughs> He's a spider menace, I tells you! That wall-crawling webhead! <laughs> That was pretty good. I like that. That was pretty good. Thank you. Anyway, cut on that. <laughs>